So I finally got a new set of wheels on the GTI, and if you guys have ever shot for aftermarket wheels, you know how laborious and time consuming it can be looking at all the different options that you have. So in today's video, I wanna share with you guys what I've learned while getting my new wheels. If you guys have been following along as I've been modding my GTI, you know that I'm new to the modding world and I'm just documenting and sharing all the knowledge that I'm learning as I mod the car. We've already done a bunch of stuff to it. We did the downpipe, APR downpipe, APR stage two tune. We got a uh, stage two South Bend clutch. We have, of course, I've put the clear bra, the window tint, we ceramic coated it. We got some intake parts, some uh, throttle pipes and discharge pipes in it from DFG Tuning. And now we got my brand new Rotoform RSC wheels and Michelin Pilot 4S tires from Fitment Industries. So I spent like six months looking at all kinds of different websites and brands and manufacturers of wheels. And holy crap, is there a lot of options out there. And during my research, I actually ran into a website called Fitment Industries, and they made this pretty complicated decision pretty easy, actually, with their website. And going into this, I didn't know much about wheels or sizes or bolt patterns or offsets or anything like that. And the more I dug in, the more I learned. And one of the first things I actually learned is that this is not called a rim, it's called a wheel. A rim is just a part of the wheel assembly. Uh, the middle part of the wheel here is the hub. You got your spokes, and then the very outside of this wheel is called the rim. The internet has made shopping for wheels really easy. Most sites, including Fitment Industries, will have a drop-down menu that you can choose your year, make, and model of car, and it'll show you what wheels are going to fit your car. If you don't have that drop-down menu, you would need to know your bolt pattern and the size of the wheel that you need to fit on your particular vehicle. Now, this wheel has a five by 112 bolt pattern, meaning that it has five studs and the distance between the center of the studs is 112 millimeters. You you may have four, six, or even eight studs depending on your make and model. This wheel is compatible with a couple different bolt patterns and that's why you're gonna see all the holes in the middle. In the middle of the wheel is a hub. Most of the wheels have different hub bore sizes. If your wheel hub size is not the same size as the hub on your car, you're going to need hub centric rings. With these rings, the weight of the wheel and most of the stress is on the wheel hub. Without them, the weight of the wheel and your car is on the studs, which could actually shear off while you're driving, and then you're gonna have a really bad day. It also cuts down on vibration, making sure that you have a really tight fit and the wheel stays centered. Just get them, they're cheap. Then we have offset. Now this was confusing and still is a little confusing for me. This wheel has a positive 35 millimeter offset, meaning if you put a center line down the wheel where the hub connects to the vehicle in relation to where that center line is, that's your offset. If you have a positive offset, the hub connection is more to the outside of the wheel in relation to that center line. And a negative offset is the opposite. The hub connection is closer to the vehicle. So my wheel is a positive offset, meaning the lower the number, the more the wheel is gonna stick out. On my GTI, the recommended offsets are anywhere from 30 millimeters to 52 millimeters. So I went on the low end, so you can see that my wheels kind of stick out a little bit because of that. I do wanna lower the car, so hopefully I don't have any issues with that fender well when I do it. I did have the option to go with a bigger wheel, a 19 inch wheel, but I actually stuck with uh, the OEM 18 inch wheel. If I did go with that bigger wheel, I probably would have gone with a 45 millimeter offset so they can tuck into that wheel well a little more. For tires, I ended up going with the Michelin Pilot 4S's here. The size is a 245-35 R18. Uh, before my research on tires, I didn't know much, but I did know that you didn't want to buy cheap tires. The safety is just not something that you want to cheap out on. Uh, the two tires I was deciding between were the summer tires or performance tires and an all-season tire. I didn't know the difference between them. And after my research, I found out that 
Obviously, the summer tires are made for warmer climates, hot weather, uh, and they're optimized for grip and performance. So if you have a performance car and you're gonna do performance driving, uh, it's probably a good idea to get a performance tire. I also found out uh, versus an all-season tire, the performance tires are gonna perform better both on wet and dry conditions at a certain temperature, in the hot, warm temperatures. So uh, one downside that I did find is that you're, you don't have as much tread life or tread wear on a performance tire as you do on an all-season tire. You're gonna get more life out of those all-season tires, but you're not gonna get quite the performance that you would out of your summer, summer tires. All these numbers on the side of the tire, the 245 slash 35 R18, uh, they correspond with the size of the wheel. The 245 is the tire width, which is measured from the sidewall to sidewall. I used to be running a 225 tire and then I went to a 245, which is another reason probably why they stick out a little further, in hopes of more traction. More tire equals more traction, right? The 35 is an aspect ratio on the sidewall, which is weird, it's not a size. It's the width of the sidewall in relation to the width of the tire. So the sidewall is 35% of what the width of the tire, that 245 is. The higher this number is, the better ride you're going to have. This is why you'll see the 65 and 75s on SUV and trucks, a little more of a luxury ride. The lower the number typically will give you better cornering, better performance, but with a little bit of a rougher ride to it. The R18, that's just the size of the tire. If you're putting your wheels on yourself, you gotta make sure that you're torquing your wheels to the factory specs. If they're too tight, you can actually damage the bolts or warp your rotors. And if they're too loose, well, the wheel can fall off. All right, by no means am I a wheel expert or I, this is everything that you need to know about wheels. Fitment Industry, they have a ton of informational videos on their website. They were absolutely fantastic. I'm super happy with the wheels. Tell me what you guys think of them. I absolutely love them. Next, we gotta lower this thing a couple inches because now it looks like a little bit of a monster truck. So stay tuned, make sure you guys subscribe. Thanks for watching this video. See you next time.